Hello everyone and Ramadan Kareem to you and your family. Now, fasting in Ramadan has a greater significance and all our Muslim people with diabetes would love to fast during this holy month of Ramadan. Now Ramadan poses different challenges to people with diabetes while they are planning to fast. Now in this video, I will tell you how to fast in Ramadan safely if you have diabetes. But this video is only for educational purpose. And I strongly recommend you to see your treating doctor for further advice so that he can tell you how to fast in Ramadan safely and he can adjust the dosage of your medications so you will not have any serious problem while fasting in Ramadan. What is the significance of fasting in Ramadan? Fasting during Ramadan is one of the five pillars of Islam. It commemorates the time when the Holy Quran was revealed to Prophet Muhammad. This month-long fast is obligatory for all healthy Muslims who have reached puberty. It is a time for spiritual contemplation and seeking nearness to God. It is believed that spiritual rewards for good deeds are multiplied during Ramadan. Followers must refrain from eating and drinking between dawn and sunset and must also abstain from using oral medication, sexual activity and smoking. So what are the major risks of fasting in people with diabetes during Ramadan? The first and foremost is hypoglycemia or low sugar which is less than 70 mg per cent or hyperglycemia or high sugar more than 300 mg per cent. Dehydration because of the restricted fluid intake or if the sugar is not controlled because of excess urination and ketoacidosis particularly in people with type 1 diabetes or type 2 diabetes with severe insulin deficiency. What is pre-Ramadan assessment? It includes examination of patient by treating doctor to see overall well-being, risk assessment by the treating doctor and medical advice whether fasting is safe or not. To check control of blood sugar before Ramadan and make sure that it is controlled and to check control of blood pressure and cholesterol before Ramadan. Now, what is pre-Ramadan education? This is of great significance because a good pre-Ramadan education can prevent most of the problems related to fasting during Ramadan. This pre-Ramadan education includes the role of self-monitoring of blood glucose, then risk quantification, whether you are in a low risk or moderate or high risk category for fasting. When should you break the fast? When there is a low sugar like less than 70 mg percent or very high sugar more than 300 mg percent. What is the best time to do exercise and what exercises you should do? Then fluid and meal planning in sahur and iftar, which is very, very important. And last but not the least, the medication adjustments during fasting to avoid low or high blood sugar. So pre-Ramadan education is very, very important to fast in Ramadan safely. Now the next question is that who is exempted from fasting in Ramadan? Actually, your doctor is going to do a risk stratification or calculation for you and he will tell you whether it is safe for you to fast in Ramadan or not. But these are the categories of people who are exempted from fasting in Ramadan. First is pregnant women with diabetes or women having menstruation. Number two, people with diabetes and hypoglycemia unawareness who cannot recognize the symptoms of low sugar and they may go in coma if the sugar goes down. Then number three, unstable heart disease or stroke. Number four, people with diabetic kidney disease with EGFR of less than 45 ml per minute. Number five, elderly patients with diabetes and impaired mental function and who are dependent on caregiver. Number six, people with diabetes and unstable mental illness. Number seven, any acute illness or hospitalization due to any reason. Number eight, people with type 1 diabetes or type 2 diabetes who are poorly controlled. So please ask your treating doctor about your risk category and take your decision accordingly. So when should the blood glucose be checked in Ramadan? These are the seven times when it can be checked like before sahur, morning around 10 o'clock, midday time at around 12 noon, mid-afternoon at around between 2 to 3 p.m., pre-sunset or before iftar, then two hours after iftar and at any time when there are symptoms of hypo or hyperglycemia or if you are not feeling well. 
The frequency varies from person to person as per the risk level and the type of medications used. Particularly if somebody is using insulin or medications which can cause hypoglycemia, they should monitor more frequently. And they can use freestyle libre, which is a non-invasive way to measure blood glucose many times per day. So when can the fast be terminated in people with diabetes? If somebody is having hypoglycemia or low sugar and blood glucose is less than 70 mg per deciliter during the time of fasting and then that person should eat or drink something and then should repeat that sugar test after one hour to make sure it's becoming normal. Hyperglycemia, if the sugar level is more than 300 mg percent, our symptoms of hypo are acute illness. So how can we differentiate between hypo and hyperglycemia? One thing to remember that hunger is a common symptom. It can happen in both, but in hypoglycemia, mainly there will be tremors, sweating, palpitation, then altered mental status or confusion or headache. While in hyperglycemia, there will be extreme thirst and then frequent urination, fatigue, confusion and abdominal pain, which can be a sign of ketoacidosis also. Now, this is a very commonly asked question. Does doing lab tests or cell glucose monitoring disrupt the fasting? Checking your blood sugar at home or doing a lab test during fasting does not disrupt the fasting in Ramadan. So what should be the ideal way to break the fast in iftar in people with diabetes? Break the fast with water and one to three dates as per prophetic tradition. Then start with mixed fruits, soups, milk and mixed nuts. If taking juice, don't take more than 100 to 150 ml and prefer the fresh one. But still, I will suggest that you should go for whole fruits rather than juices. Then after one hour, try to take your main meal, which should be balanced and healthy. Try to increase the water intake during non-fasting hours and try to drink at least 2 liters of water. Now, what is the healthy sahur meal in Ramadan? Sahur meal is very very important because this is going to help you to sustain fasting throughout the day. And Sahur meal needs to be wholesome and it should be taken as late as possible. Now you should eat food which are rich in complex carbohydrates and proteins because they take time in digestion and absorption and they help you in maintaining the sugar level during fasting period. For example, you should include more of whole grain breads whole wheat chapatis or brown rice or quinoa, beans, millets, milk, vegetables, etc. because they have a slow release of glucose and uh, they will help you in maintaining your energy level and glucose level to the normal range throughout the day. Some more important tips about eating in Ramadan. Try to take two smaller meals and one snack rather than two heavy meals. Eat slowly and chew well. Avoid eating desserts loaded with sugar during or after iftar to avoid the higher levels of sugar levels. Avoid overeating at one time. Avoid or reduce deep fried and spicy foods, otherwise you can take a smaller portion. Avoid or reduce caffeine drinks such as coke, coffee or tea because they can dehydrate you by causing more urination. When and which exercises should be done in Ramadan? You should modify the intensity and timing of exercise to avoid hypoglycemia or low sugar episodes. And go for simple stretching exercises in morning 3 to 4 hours after sahur. Do not exercise if you are maintaining low blood sugar levels. Walking or light gym exercises can be done 2 hours after sunset meal. You can modify the regime as per your age, as per your requirement and as per your schedule. Now this is the last but the most important question that how should the medication dosage and timing be adjusted in Ramadan. You must see your treating doctor much before the Ramadan starts and you should request him to adjust the time and dosage of your medications and he should be giving you this in writing. The medications requiring dose and time modifications are mostly sulfonurias like glimperide or glicazide and insulins. Different people have different insulin regimes and they need different type of modification as per their requirement and control. And this is going to be told you by your treating doctor. The medications requiring timing modifications are SGLT2 inhibitors like depaglifosin, empaglifosin, canaglifosin and arthoglifosin. These should be taken one to two hours after 
iftar when you are sufficiently hydrated other medications like metformin glp1 receptor agonist and dp4 inhibitors they do not cause low sugar or hypoglycemia so dose modification is not required but the timings can be adjusted to make the regime simpler oral semaglutide it should preferably be taken 30 minutes before sahur dose modification of medications is based on how good is your diabetes control the dosage of antihypertensive medications may need to be adjusted if your blood pressure is tightly controlled you should continue medicate medicine for elevated cholesterol and triglycerides as it is so i wish you and your family a blessed happy and successful ramadan